Well, we are going to wait a few minutes uh, to get started. We've just got the one bill to do, and we have, I think, uh, uh, a couple running late and maybe some with some uh, page pictures. So I want to make sure we have a quorum before we start out. Representative Toplicker, we see you're online. Are you in your office or in the building? I am not in the building. Okay, thank you. Uh, Representative Neely, can you confirm that you are in the building? Yep, there we are. Okay, we're good to go, Mr. Chair. Not bad. We can call our meeting to order, and uh, the uh, business of today will be a final action on House Bill 2268, enacting the Kansas Rural Home Loan Guarantee uh, Act. And uh, David, could you give us a refresher on uh, 2268? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The House Bill 2268 would be, uh, this would create two, uh, six new sections of law known as the Kansas Rural Home Loan Guarantee Act. Uh, the act would be under the administration of the state treasurer. Section one is the name and citation of the act. Uh, section two uh, is the definitional section. Um, and the definition of a loan for the, for the purpose of the act is a transaction with a financial institution to provide financing for the construction or renovation of a single family home in a rural county. And rural county is defined as any county, county in Kansas with a population of 10,000 or less. Section three authorizes the state treasurer to enter into, enter into agreements with financial institutions to provide loan guarantees against default for rural housing loans. 
um, financial institutions would apply, have to apply the, lead, the usual standards for, for making loans. To, uh, the treasurer is granted administrative powers on the act and shall adopt rules and regulations for implementation and administration of the act, including development of an application process. Uh, the treasurer can uh, contract for implementation and administration of the act and may impose fees and charges to recover costs. Um, section 4 provides that each agreement entered into by the treasurer to guarantee against default on a loan would be backed by the Rural Home Loan Guarantee Fund and shall receive prior approval by the, the treasurer or the treasurer's designee. Um, eligible costs under the loan may include land and building purchases, renovation, new construction costs, equipment, installation costs, redevelopment costs that may be capitalized financing, capitalized interest during construction and consultant fees. Um, the actual the portion of the loan is actually guaranteed by the treasurer would be um, the amount of the loan that exceeds 90% of the appraised value of the home. No loan amount above 125% of the appraised value would uh, be guaranteed. Um, Section 5 establishes the Rural Home Loan Guarantee Fund in the Treasury with the treasurer as the administrator. All the funds, all monies in the fund would be used to provide guarantees against loan risk and to pay administrative costs associated with the act. All fees and charges imposed by the treasurer and then other monies received by the treasurer in this act would be deposited in the fund. In the fund. Um, if the treasurer certifies to the director of council reports that the balance of the fund is insufficient to pay uh, loan guarantees, the director of council reports would transfer an amount from the state general fund to the rural, rural home loan guarantee fund uh, to cover such an insufficiency. Um, Section 6 requires the treasurer to prepare and submit an annual report to the uh, House Committee on Appropriations or Appropriate Budget Committee and the Senate Committee on Ways and Means or Appropriate Subcommittee. Um, and that would have begun, begins with the 2022 regular session as this was a bill introduced in the, during the 2021 session. Um, and I can take any questions. Any questions for David? Thank you, David. Well, we will now take up uh, House Bill 2268. Is there a motion concerning House Bill 2268? Mr. Chair, I move that we pass 2268 favorably. Is there a second? Representative Hoheisel seconds. Uh, all those in favor, pardon. Um, are there any proposed amendments to House Bill 2268? Representative Hoheisel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have an amendment. Oh, Heisel, would you like to uh, go through your amendment? Certainly. At first, if, um, if I could have David explain the amendment. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, the, the amendment um, really just the primary purpose is to um, change the administration of the uh, act from the state treasurer uh, to the Kansas Housing Resources Corporation. Um, and then it also um, strikes the language creating the new uh, Rural Home Loan Guarantee Fund and it actually use the State Housing Trust Fund to be the, to, to, to back the, uh, the loan guarantees. Um, the, the State Housing Trust Fund is you know, its existing fund under the administration of the, of the corporation. Um, and it also then on page two, in terms of the portion of the loan that would be guaranteed, instead of 90%, it would be 80% of the appraised value of the home, the amounts above above 80%. And then it makes the, uh, on section, 
um, would, would now be the new section five. It just makes that report to the legislature start in 2023 to reflect the, the date. And then it provides a, a cap on the amount of loans that would be guaranteed at $2 million. Um, so that'd be the, the total aggregate um, that could be guaranteed by the corporation. Thanks, David. Any questions for David? If not, Representative Paul Heisel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, from what uh, I am to understand of this amendment, we uh, heard testimony from uh, some folks when we did our, I guess it was an informational hearing we did a week or two ago. I don't think it was an official hearing. On uh, 2268, with some recommended changes, and this amendment is uh, the recommended changes from the folks testifying on that bill. Representative Shu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, David, the, the stricken Section 5 is essentially just striking out references to the state treasurer since it will no longer be housed under there, correct? Uh, yes, this, this um, as the bill is introduced, it would have created this new fund, the Rural Home Loan Guarantee Fund, under the administration of the treasurer. That, that fund, um, since it's no longer with the treasurer, that fund is no longer um, necessary. So yeah, that comes out, and it would actually be the State Housing Trust Fund that is backing the, the guarantees. Thank you. And, and Representative Paul Heisel, uh, I thought, like, if I recall correctly, we kind of chatted about uh, the group that two million dollars might not be enough. I, I just want to know if there's any discussion on expanding that. There was no discussion in the crafting of this amendment, but that is something we can go back and look at in the future. Okay, we have a, a motion. Is there? on uh, the motion to amend. Representative uh, Avery amends, uh, makes a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any other questions on the amendment? Okay. Um, Back on our, our uh, have a motion in a second. Uh, let's go. We'll do all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. A motion passes. Any further discussion or questions? This, uh, this amendment passes. Any further amendments uh, on this bill? Representative Osman? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. I do have an amendment that I'd like to uh, distribute. Okay. Th that like David, if you would have that passed out. Representative Osmond, would you want the reviser to explain your amendment, or would you like to go ahead and explain it? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I can explain the amendment. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this amendment does a major thing, which is um, allow for an oversight committee um, that can oversee these funds. And it would be included um, in there. There would be the executive director of the corporation. This would be... Um, <clears throat> the executive director of the corporation, a member of the board of directors from the Kansas Development Finance Authority, a member of the state treasurer's department, uh, state treasurer's office, um, some member representing the banks of Kansas, and some member representing the credit unions of Kansas. And um, 
that that oversight committee then um, would be able to necessarily distribute those funds. And I can further elaborate on why I'm doing that at, at a later point in time. Any questions, Representative Hoheisel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a question for the revisor. Um, other than conceptual amendments, this is the first amendment I've seen that kind of looks like this. Is this, I mean, this is kosher, this is fine. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, yeah, this is, since this is sort of a, an amendment to an amendment that hadn't been okay, I got presided you. yet. Yeah, okay. so. Thank you. Thank it's you, based on the, as the amendment was, that was just adopted, so it's kind of okay. piggybacking on that. Okay. Representative Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in Part D, where it talks about compensation for the committee members, do we know what that will look like, or is that at the discretion of somebody? We Compensation, other than what's listed, is um, based on the statute. It's thirty-five dollars per day as a per diem, based upon when they uh, meet. Okay, thank you. Representative Wassinger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't know the name of the board, but there's already something that's uh, been created by the KHRC. So I think this amendment is. Representative Powell. Thank you. Representative Powell Heisel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do agree with uh, my colleague to the right. There, there is already a, a board established. I think this just puts another unnecessary burden, unnecessary board. Um, so I will ask the committee to please oppose this amendment. Representative Hsu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can, can one of the previous two representatives elaborate a little bit more on the board? Is that it's the first time I'm hearing of the actual board, so. Yeah, as far as that, uh, some of our uh, folks that worked on this, uh, Allie, if you have a, an answer to this or someone else that's here about the existence of a current uh, kind of oversight board, Alex? Yeah, good morning, committee. For the record, Alex Oral, Kansas Banker Association. Yes, the Kansas, uh, Kansas Housing Resource Corporation already has a board of directors that is appointed by the governor. Uh, they do have members representing the industry and the banking industry that is already on there. Um, the chairman of the board is Suchitra, uh, who, uh, Suchitra, uh, uh, Pandem, uh, sorry, I got to get her name uh, wrong. Sorry, apologize. Uh, and then Vice Chairman Chris Donnelly, who is also a retired banker uh, that is on the board. So there's already industry representation that oversees the Kansas Housing Resource Corporation and is a, a, a governor appointed board already that oversees all of the programs at KHRC, which this program would be under that direction. So the, this would be just an additional program that would then have oversight from, from this board. Okay. Okay. Rips Osman. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, what I didn't hear on there was um, one of the members, including from the State Treasurer's Department, and I just want to make sure that there's uh, valuable insight and, and input from their department into the implementation of this particular bill. I like this bill. I think that it's going to do great things. I just want to make sure that it's implemented properly. Um, one of the other things that, uh, that, I, that I heard in the testimony was about uh, a lack of ability to appraise houses properly in rural areas. Um, and that includes um, lack of stock, uh, old stock, that includes um, uh, just that the appraisals have been eight years out of date or so. And I want to make sure, I think that my amendment can help to rectify this because we can't necessarily legislate the ability to, to appraise properly, but having a committee that's dedicated to this bill that can oversee and, and collaborate together, um, that does include a member of the Treasurer's Department, um, would allow for uh, proper implementation of this bill. And, you know, as I said, I do really support HB 2268. I just want to make sure it's successful. David, I just want to confirm, this bill uh, represents uh, new construction, right? Uh, not, not existing stock? 
uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, that it could be new construction or renovation of a, of a single family. Single family, okay. And I don't remember the number of it, uh, but it seems like last year we had a bill on uh, appraisal in a rural area, I, I think in, uh, might have been in that under 10,000 category that uh, um, allowed some discretion on on, uh, on the appraisal, I, I think more like on existing stock than new, than maybe new home. I, I don't, 22, and it was, and it was, uh, on existing uh, homes, sale of existing, or or both construction and is existing. both okay so this this solved uh, some of the problem on trying to get an appraisal but not necessarily the the difference of what could be um, the uh, cost to build versus uh, what the that appraised value ended up with uh, potentially so uh, there was something there um, did you have a Comment, Representative Hose Heisel. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on that. That was a HB 2236. Um, and I know Representative Osman is, is new to the committee this year, so he wasn't here for some of the discussions about uh, appraisals that we had last year. Um, it was an issue that we discussed in this committee pretty thoroughly last year, and we passed some legislation to address it. Um, we passed it out of the House uh, March 18th of last year, 122 to nothing. It's currently sit, sitting in the Senate Financial Institutions Committee. I am unsure of what the path is out of there, but that is a discussion that we've had, and we do take the appraisal situation seriously. Um, again, I go back to this as, as redundant and unneeded because there is already a board. Um, this just puts another layer in, in between that we don't really need. So again, I will ask the committee to oppose this amendment. I, I appreciate the representative bringing this, and I know that it, you would like to have the treasurer's office be on that advisory board as well. Any of these uh, programs are, oh, they're always in touch with the treasurer's office. So there is some oversight in that sense, whether they're used, they're, they're not doing the, the loans correctly or not. So I don't think we need this just to add that. But I thank, your, thank you for your efforts, and I will oppose it as well. Representative Shu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I rise in support of this amendment. It's not rare for us in, in this body or, or in the legislature to have separate boards, even under other boards, to, to look at specific new legislation. And, and I think it's a good idea it always just to have a, a disparate set of eyes on, on, on it. Um, it's something that we hear quite often with the State Finance Council looking at things. It's just additional sets of eyes in different departments, I think, makes for better legislation. So I will support. Any other comments, questions for uh, Representative Osman? If uh, not, uh, Representative Osman, uh, we've explained it. If you would like to uh, uh, make a motion on your amendment. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I uh, make a motion. I move uh, a favorable passage of my uh, of my amendment. I move my I move my amendment. And okay, we have we we do have a motion and a second, and we've now moved uh, the amendment. And uh, so we'll stand. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, uh, please uh, raise your right hand. I have three. How about online? Any? No. Oh, okay. Uh, so all those opposed signify by raising your right hand. Uh, 
Motion failed. We're back on the bill as it was amended. Any other amendments on this bill? Uh, Mr. Chair, I close. Okay. No other amendments, and we have a motion to to close. Pardon. The motion, the motion was to uh, pass uh, uh, 2268 20, uh, as amended, correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. And is there a second? I have a second by Representative Hoheisel. Uh, any final discussion? All, okay. All those in favor of passing out House Bill 2268 as amended, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, nay. 2268 uh, passes out uh, as amended. Uh, that's the only thing we have on the agenda tomorrow. We're looking to set up uh, a, um, hopefully a hearing on Monday. And uh, Monday is our last day, so we may also see if we have any anything else that uh, might be in a position that uh, it'll be completed and we can come back and, and do some work on it. But that, that will be our last uh, meeting date of the first part of the session. So we do have a couple bills that are, are technically blessed because they started out in the tax committee. So we will have, and some of those are being worked on, but we'll have time for those. So we'll try to get anyone uh, that is not blessed uh, try to deal with it on Monday. So watch your uh, agendas that come out uh, on that, and we'll want to be sure to have uh, a quorum either in the Capitol or here in the committee for uh, Monday, because if necessary, we will we will try to uh, get any bills that aren't blessed taken care of on Monday. So as far as today, a uh, short meeting, uh, even with the, the wait to, to get started, so we are adjourned.